So here's a scene I have in Blender. Right now it has all of the default render settings and some of these are really slowing down how quickly Blender can render things. First off, one of the biggest things you can do is if you're in cycles, you're gonna wanna activate your GPU. Now, unfortunately this only works if you have a GPU. Uh, if you do have a GPU, make sure you go to your preferences, go to system and then go under optics or CUDA. I generally go with optics because it's faster and you wanna check your graphics card right here. This is your CPU. Depending on your project, you may wanna test turning on this uh, CPU. In most cases, this isn't gonna speed up your render time, so I usually just leave it unchecked. So if I render this image uh, with all the other default settings. So once I do that, with the default settings in place, uh, you're gonna see my render time up here is gonna be roughly, I don't know, 15 minutes, maybe, maybe less. Um, that's coming down from what it was before, which was saying about two hours for a frame, which is way, way, way too much. But just enabling your GPU will help your graphics render a lot faster. So uh, if you do have that option, then you definitely need to do it. So one of the biggest ways to uh, speed up render times is to turn down your samples. Basically, this is calculating uh, the bounces of light within your scene and um, averaging them out to make uh, your image. The less samples you have, the less detail that Blender is going to have to work with. Uh, so if I change this to one sample, we're going to get a much faster render. As you can see, we get a lot quicker of a render, but you're going to get a ton less detail and it's not going to be a very great render. However, uh, this kind of looks cool like an abstract art. Anyway, if you want to get a painterly effect, just give it one sample. What you're going to want to do is find a good balance for these samples. I usually sit, I try to sit at around 100. Hopefully my scene doesn't need more than 100, but uh, sometimes it, it might. So for this scene specifically, I think I went to like 200. A few things you can do if you're on a time limit to slow down your renders, uh, you can turn up the time limit to a higher amount of seconds or lower amount of seconds. Uh, basically what this is going to do is it's going to limit the amount of time each frame gets to render. So if I set it to 10 seconds, it means that when I hit render, it will stay on that frame for about 10 seconds and wherever it's at, it'll finish rendering. One of the biggest ways to speed up your render times is by checking the noise threshold. Now, normally this is set to something like 0.01. You can turn this up, though if you're doing an animation, you don't wanna turn it up too high. Uh, basically what this is gonna do, once you get to a certain amount of samples within a given area, it's going to say to stop working on that area and it's gonna smooth everything out. So it doesn't really matter how many samples you get to, uh, it'll just start smoothing things out from that point. So uh, what you're gonna do is maybe just play around with this and basically lower numbers are gonna cause less artifacts in an animation. Higher numbers are gonna cause more artifacts in an animation. I recommend not going over 0.03 or 0.04. In, in my recent animations, I generally don't go over 0.02. So just finding the right balance, depending on your project. If you are just doing a single frame, you can get away with doing something like 0.07 or 0.08. And this is going to drop your render times significantly. Um, now, one thing you'll notice, uh, now you see every time we go to render, we're getting this thing where it's updating our geometry and loading everything in. And basically when that happens, uh, it took 13 seconds about, maybe, maybe 10 seconds in order to do that. It'll only happen on the first frame of our animation, but the issue is every time you go to re-render, you stop your rendering and start it up again, that's 10 seconds. So if you stopped 100 times and started from frame one again, you would be at 1,000 seconds, which, you know, I'm no, I'm no god at math, uh, but it's a, it's a couple of minutes. <laughs> it's, uh, it's like 15 minutes. Uh, it's, so that's 15 minutes wasted, where all you really have to do is if you go down to Final Render and choose Persistent Data, it's going to store all of that information within the blend file so that when you go to click Render, that won't happen anymore, and uh, it's going to just drop your render time by, you know, 10 seconds. It'll also make sure that if you re-render, you're not wasting time waiting for it to update. All right, so now, as you can see also, I've got this time limit on, so that would shorten my render times. Uh, if you have the time limit on, you can also turn up your minimum sample count. Basically, uh, the time limit, it'll say after 10 seconds, stop rendering. But if you turn this minimum sample count up from zero, it'll make sure that every frame gets at least this many samples. If your frame is at 75 samples at eight seconds, and then it hits that 10 second mark, 
it'll stop the render. But if your frame is only at 50, sa uh, 50 samples and your time limit set to 10 seconds and it's only been 8 seconds, it'll take an extra... It'll go past that threshold of 10 seconds until it reaches 70, and then it'll stop rendering. So I'm going to turn those off for now. As you saw in that other render, though, uh, there was a lot of noise. So one way to get rid of all that noise in the render is to crank your samples really high. But uh, that's not very cost-effective to your render times. So uh, we have this denoise box, and you can check this denoiser. And what will happen is essentially it'll take a certain area uh, where there's noise, and it'll use an AI algorithm which will smooth out those areas and average them out uh, based on what it thinks belongs there. Uh, so obviously, the less noise you have, the easier it's going to be and the more detailed it's going to be. But if you really, really need it, um, the denoiser is going to carry some of the workload and just smooth things out so everything kind of mixes well. Now, denoising is a dangerous game because uh, with the noise threshold and everything, if you have it too high and you're doing an animation, you're going to get artifacts, basically uh, little splotches of noise that's been smoothed out. But every single frame, it has a different noise pattern. So you end up getting essentially a different little splotch on every frame, and it'll kind of flicker. Uh, it just looks a little bit strange. It's called a denoising artifact. So you have to be careful to make sure you balance these things. Uh, you want to lower your render times, but you don't want to do it at the cost of making your animation or scene bad. Uh, within the denoiser, you've got a few options. So we can switch from open image to optics. It depends on your scene. Uh, sometimes I feel like optics is a little bit faster. Sometimes I feel like open image is a little bit faster. So you can flip between those two and change your preferences. Uh, I also prefer to use passes with this. So an albedo and a normal pass uh, generally tend to make things look better overall and I feel like are less susceptible to uh, noising de uh, artifacts. Next, uh, keep the quality high and keep the pre-filter accurate. Uh, it really doesn't speed anything up that fast, and it looks worse. So it's not really worth it. Uh, finally, if you can, I'd recommend using your GPU. It will just help speed things up just a little bit. Now, uh, we get down here. We have this light paths node area. Uh, playing with these can definitely help speed up your render times. For this scene, I have a bunch of transparent objects, so I do need to turn this up until I don't see any more of these kind of black spots. Uh, if you don't have any volumes in your scene, you can turn down the volumes. If you don't have any glass materials, you can turn them down. As you can see, this whole water is glass, so I'm going to want at least a few, maybe, maybe two, and it'll lower it. Glossy, same thing. Diffuse, same thing. And um, that'll... That'll speed things up a little bit, uh, but probably not by a lot. Uh, as for the, the direct lighting and the indirect lighting, you can clamp these values. Um, they are going to, however, mess with the render quite a bit if you clamp them too much, uh, as you can see. Uh, so you have to be careful with this stuff because it's also manipulating the way that light works. So you may not want to clamp it too much. Uh, as you can see, it starts to change once I go below this value of like 0.6 so i could set this to 0.1 or 1 sorry and uh everything should stay the same and uh it may speed up render times a little bit uh generally this though uh in this specific scene wouldn't speed up render times it's more so for scenes where you've got really bright lights and you've got a lot of light bounces uh because i'm just using an hri there's not that many bright bright lights like neon signs or something uh, however, you can clamp all those light bounces down here if you really need to. Caustics, uh, if you don't have any caustics, you can turn down the reflective and the refractive. I do, so I don't want to turn those off. And uh, fast GI approximation. Checking this will speed up render times quite a bit. It uh, basically creates ambient occlusion, but uh, I'm not going to check that for my scene. It's just something I don't want to do. Now, uh, another way to speed up your render times is you can check this simplify box. Basically, uh, you can control the amount of subdivisions that are shown in the viewport and speed up your viewport. You can change the amount of particles that uh, exist. Uh, so if you change the amount of child particles, uh, it won't get rid of any of the main particles, but any like instance particles that are created will be limited. Uh, texture limit, you can limit your textures to something smaller, uh, which will save your memory and uh, save on a little bit of render times. And uh, you can do all the same stuff in here. Now, one tip I don't really see people talk about a lot is if you go into the output settings and you go to this percentage, this resolution scale, uh, this can significantly improve render times. If you turn it down, it'll definitely improve render times, basically making your image smaller. 
uh, which may not be what you want. So you have to be careful with that because that will make your render lose quality. But it may help you get a better render with a smaller amount of samples because you can turn this up to like a value of 110 or 120. And now it's going to be 120% of this. So you're going to get a 20% larger render resolution size. And then you can go back into your uh, render properties and turn down your sample count. I find I do this with every render. Basically, I'll turn this up to a value of 120 and then turn my samples down. I find that it gives you a better render overall. There's less denoising artifacts. And if you do the math on it, you can turn your samples down enough to the point where uh, you don't lose any render times. Uh, but basically, it just makes the image larger and it fills more samples into the image uh making it easier for the denoiser and getting rid of some denoising artifacts. Uh, there's a few big things that slow down renders in Blender. Uh, one of the biggest ones is using an emission shader uh, can really slow down your render times. So if you have a very bright emission shader like this in your render, creating a lot of light, this can create a lot of uh, noise artifacts. Um, and it'll slow down your render times. It'll make your render look worse. So one thing, turn down your emissions and use lights because uh, the lamps are designed to light things up. Emission shaders are just to make something look like it's glowing, really. They shouldn't be used as a light source. Uh, it'll really help your render times quite a lot. So uh, just be wary of emission shaders. Um, another big one that slows down render times is ambient occlusion. If you have a lot of objects with ambient occlusion, your render times are going to chug. Uh, it really slows it down, so you have to be careful. Now, one of the other huge ones uh, that always slow down render times is volumes. This is probably the biggest one that's going to make your render times chug. Let's, let's do a test render without anything in it. Let's just render this scene as it is, no changed settings, and we'll see how long it takes. All right, so here's my render. No volume. It took 24 seconds for one frame which is not bad at all. Um, however, if I add in a volume, let's just create a volume, put it over the whole scene like you normally would, add a new material, make it a volume, and I'll set it to a low density like 0.02 or whatever. And here we go. We've got a, we've got a big volume. Uh, if you have volume, you're going to make sure that your uh, light balances are taking the volume into account, so that's important. And so our baseline was 24 seconds without the volume. Let's see what it is with the volume. All right, with the denoiser and everything else, we are at 36 seconds. So we added 33% to our render time. Uh, basically, we were 24 before, and now we're 36. So 12 extra seconds onto our render times. And honestly, everything back here looks kind of worse because of it. Um, it's with the same exact settings. Having a volume can significantly slow down your render times. Uh, an alternative to a volume that you can sometimes use is a mist pass, which a mist pass is pretty simple to set up. Uh, there's a lot of videos on it. I have a video on YouTube uh, in my shorts feed that covers how to make a mist pass. Uh, but basically, you can set up a mist pass, which allows you to basically add in mist into the background or fog into the background without really a hit to your render times. So we're going to use our compositor and add our mist in, and we're going to render out this frame. As you can see, we get our mist, our volume in the background, and uh, we've actually lowered our render time. Uh, sometimes I do feel like using the compositor, uh, using the denoise in the compositor can help speed things up a little bit. Um, but as you can see, we get our mist still, and uh, our render times are about the same, if not lower. Uh, one last way, make sure you speed up your render times, is uh, don't have any apps open other than Blender. Uh, it'll slow down render times. Obviously, I'm recording things, so my render times are actually probably a little bit faster than what I'm getting up top. Uh, I'm probably closer to about 12 seconds or so, uh, but it's uh, I'm recording things, so my GPU and everything is also being used in order to screen record. Finally, a very quick and easy one is don't render when you're in the shaded view. Uh, essentially, if you're in the shaded view, your GPU is working on rendering your scene here in the viewport, and then it's also rendering your scene up in here. Uh, so basically, you're just rendering twice at the same time, uh, which can cause things to slow down a little bit. So what you can do is you can pause this, 
or uh, you can also just go to your uh, viewport shading up here and turn on uh, just this, I can't remember the name, uh, just the solid preview. Your renders will speed up a little bit from that as well. Uh, but anyway, this isn't a like full step-by-step -step guide on how to lower your render times. It will significantly help, but you shouldn't follow these exact settings. Uh, that's all I wanted to share, just a few render tips, uh, maybe some that people don't really mention that often, uh, that can help speed up your render times. Uh, so anyway, if you like the video, uh, make sure to subscribe. Uh, and if you go over to my Patreon, I'm going to start uploading early access videos. Uh, this scene is going to be on Patreon very soon. Uh, the full scene for download, so go check that out as well. Uh, on Gumroad, you can download assets from the scene, such as all these houses, these boats, and um, a bunch of other props and stuff that's scattered across as well, and a few of the node groups that I created uh, specifically for this scene. Uh, so anyway, I'll see you all later.